find a comfortable position. God, you know, this is a lot harder than what it looks, okay? Give me a second to adjust to everything so I can do this review. Wireless, too. Actually, that's so cool. I can just hold it up like this. Ooh, and it lit up. How fancy was that? Right away. What's up everybody, it's the Biggie. First and foremost, thank you for stopping by today's video. Today we have a review I honestly thought I would not do. And I don't wanna start off the video like that, but I, I want you guys to have complete transparency across the board when I do things. I like to keep it real, that's just how I am. If you guys have noticed throughout the years, I've never really been a razor product kind of guy. I personally did not vibe with their marketing. I didn't know what it was about it, but I just personally never wanted to go out and get a razor product. Again, just being honest, I appreciate these people sending out this product and I do wanna make that very clear at the start of the video that razor did send me these products to review, but the response of my review will have no relation to them sending this product out to me. It's gonna be 100% real. By now, you guys and gals should know the style of my reviews, they're pretty clear cut, simple, to the point. I don't dive into the ins and outs, the weights, the speeds. I just tell you as a average consumer like myself who likes to create stuff and game, does it work for me? Did I enjoy it? That's just, that's just how I am. So here's what you wanna know. Are they good? Is it worth it? I'll get to the worth towards the end of the video, but these things are unreal. I'm talking sleek, lightweight, easy to use, feels good in the hand, just balanced out well. The shape is personally perfect for myself and my needs. So in all honesty, I'm shocked about the quality of these products. I am actually shocked that I am such a big fan. When I started talking to the folks at Razor about connecting with their products and reviewing something, I was excited because it's nice to just make these introductions with people and, and have these opportunities. But I was excited to finally like be working with somebody that actually wants me to review their product. And to be upfront, in the back of my head, I was just like, okay, well, I'm sure their products will be nice. I'll mention a few good things, you know, what, whatever the best I can, but I, I probably won't use them much. And then I plugged in the Viper Ultimate and I haven't switched out since I've got these in. So I've been testing out the Razer Viper Ultimate and the Razer Basilisk, Basilisk. I apologize if I'm screwing up the name. You guys know me by now, I can't speak proper English. All I can tell you is that these are the two that I've been testing out. First thing I noticed when receiving these products is how eager they are to show you what is inside. It's a simple cut the sticker on the side and then everything opens up and there is the mouse. When it's come down to the sizing, I don't really have anything that compares to the Basilisk, but in regards to the Viper, again, for me, this has kind of been the perfect form of mouse. It's a little smaller than the Model O, but a little bigger than the final mouse, yet a little shorter than the Hottie. As of now, it does seem to have that perfect fit for me, but I have have noticed as well that when I get a new mouse and right away it seems that I do enjoy it I do love it maybe it's kind of a placebo effect of something new so here in about a week I will try another mouse out and just kind of swap through them to see what I enjoy but as of now I'm really loving the shape of this in relation to the basilisk I've been using this for creating so designing editing my stuff it's a very comfort form fitting mouse in regards to that so I, I really like this type of setup when designing something and not having the cable clutter oh my god this has been so nice. Let me tell you, especially in relation to gaming, because when it comes down to the Viper, I never really realized what a wireless mouse would do, like the power of a wireless mouse when gaming. I know that Logitech has a wireless mouse, but aside from Razer and Logitech, I really don't know of too many wireless gaming mouse out there. And a big reason why I didn't want to credit this right away is because I am used to the kind of like honeycomb or hexcomb effect. For example, where it's open like this, I personally enjoy this because I'm a husky male and I really get into my games and I sweat. So having that ventilation was really nice. So I was really worried about trying a mouse out that does not have that ventilation. And to my surprise, I actually noticed my hands aren't getting clammy or sweaty or overly hot. It's just maybe the material is just so nice. It's so matte. All I know is long-term use. Like for example, I just streamed for six hours and played all six hours and I use this. And surprisingly, like I mentioned, it doesn't get hot, it doesn't get clammy. It's honestly shocking. And I wanna just give a big hats off to the folks at Razer. To be able to create these products and collaborate with smaller and larger creators to spread the awareness on their products, it's pretty dope, I'm not gonna lie. But it's not perfect. 
do want to mention the negative experiences that I had just to point them out to you guys. And I think they're really not that big of a deal. The one minor negative experience that I had is I had both receivers for each mouse plugged into my computer. So that way while I was working, I could just use the basil list. And then when I wanted a game, I could just switch over to the Viper Ultimate. Having both of them plugged in at the same time will cause this weird like stutter sometimes in the use of the mouse. So if you own both of these and you have them both plugged in, you're somebody like me, you like to have a different mouse for creating content versus what you actually game with. And you notice this experience is because you have both of them plugged in at the same time. Another minor thing about the Viper Ultimate, which is avoidable, like you can, you can deal with it. I was running into situations while playing Fortnite where my wall would just randomly start building. I was really confused as to why this was happening. Well, one cool thing about this mouse is it can be both for right-handed or left-handed players. So they got buttons on both sides of the mouse. So to my surprise, what I was doing wrong was since I had my wall and ramp bounded to my mouse, I was actually getting into gunfights and I kept hitting my wall on the other button. Turns out all you have to do is use the Razer software and you can unbind those buttons and then that problem solved. That's not an issue. But the big issue is the software. With downloading the Razer software, instead of me just downloading the thing specifically for the mice and keyboard, I also downloaded whatever they suggested. And one of those things is some form of optimizer for your games and it's just been a horrible experience. I get huge stutters and dropped frames for my stream and gaming experience. So using that software for me was a huge no-go. I think software like that where it tries to optimize things for you and performance is just a, a, a no-go. And that's honestly the only negative thing I have to say about these. I was really weary about the whole wireless thing when it came to gaming. And in this last week, I've found not having a cable hold me down has been so amazing. Now with the cost of these, I know they're not gonna be ideal for everybody. So thankfully, Razer also has the Razer Viper. So if you're interested in that, that is a more cost-efficient route you can go. I would say these are more appropriate for the people that kind of take their setups a little bit more serious, want that nice, clean real estate away from cables. Maybe for the very serious gamers that don't like having that cable holding them down. I know in some situations it can be rather annoying when a cable bunches up, but I honestly couldn't recommend these enough. I think any potential problem you could have with the device comes down honestly to user error. At the end of the day, I didn't need to download all the Razer software. I could have just downloaded the things to control the mouse and keyboard stuff and just unbound the buttons on the Viper and been good to go. There's just not like a performance issue with the mouse overall. Like it works fine, it plays great. I've had a great experience over these last few days. Now, if you guys have any questions or concerns about the mouse, if you'd like to leave those in the comments down below, if you want to maybe ask if it compares to a certain thing or if you're using one certain mouse right now and you want to know how it would compare to using that, please feel free to ask in the comments down below because if I can't answer it, somebody else might be able to answer that for you. If you enjoyed this video in any way, shape or form, be sure to leave a like on it. Be sure to follow me over on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram and TikTok. Catch me on the live stream sometime. Come hang out. Be sure to subscribe, turn on those notifications because that's all I got for you guys today. I'm out. Peace. Yeah.